Hello and welcome to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and with me this afternoon we have Mr. Rodnell Suma, the Chief Executive Officer of the CARICOM Development Fund. Mr. Suma, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. When we hear CARICOM Development Fund and Renewable Energy, what should we think about? What should come to our minds? Well, if you'll allow me to step back a bit, okay. because I think I need to put it in a broader context. Mm -hmm. The CARICOM Development Fund was established by the Treaty of Chagaramas, particularly to help disadvantaged countries, regions, and sectors so that they would be better enabled to take advantage of the CARICOM single market and economy. Uh, so where renewable energy fits into that framework is that it, it has been identified as a, as a sector in which uh, countries that rely on fossil fuels mm -hmm. uh, at, at the country level, but also at the business level, at, uh, are at a disadvantage because of the high costs of energy. And through our process of consultation with the member states of CARICOM that have signed up to the CDF, uh, we have been given the mandate to help small businesses in particular address their competitiveness challenges um, by helping them to reduce their operating costs. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas in which their operating cost is highest is in electricity use. So, um, and I think it's important for me to indicate now um, that uh, because we are a regional institution that operates within the CARICOM system, there is a specific regional institution that deals with renewable energy and energy efficiency. That's the uh, Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, CRE. Mm -hmm. So we have a partnership arrangement with SECRI through which we uh, get support from them in executing our mandate in renewable energy. Um, but we got into this business of renewable energy, particularly to help small businesses to reduce their operating costs. But as you know, um, because this is a major uh, dimension of climate action, mm -hmm, dealing mm -hmm. with mitigation arising from the use of uh, fossil fuels and the need to mitigate uh, the level of emissions, uh, we have this dual objective that we are trying to achieve to help the region reduce uh, uh, emissions, Emission as well as operating with, working with CS, um, SMEs to help them to reduce their operating costs uh, in relation to energy use. Why is it important for us to reduce uh, the um, amount of energy that we use? Of course, I've been hearing about it for such a long time, but we still have individuals who may not understand the importance of reducing that level of energy we use with uh, fossil fuels, for example? Well, there are many reasons why we need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's an environmental benefit. Um, it's a global issue. Mm -hmm. Even if our contribution in the region to um, greenhouse gases is, 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 is much lower than the industrial countries, much, much lower, mm -hmm. uh, because we are impacted by climate change, it's important for us to, to, to demonstrate that we are playing our part in helping with uh, emissions reduction by working on the mitigation side. Also, uh, a lot of our uh, fuel is imported, and so there's a foreign exchange drain from the importation of fuel. So it's important for us to use the resources that are available to us and, and also help to, to conserve foreign exchange. And as I indicated earlier, because it's such a major uh, element of operating costs for businesses, to the extent that we're able to, uh, to help them to increase the efficiency of the energy use and to reduce the overall level uh, of use of uh, fossil fuel-based energy, then it also uh, redounds to their benefit by way of increasing their competitiveness by lowering their operating costs. Happy you mentioned the benefit because that's where I was about to go. Um, what benefits would one see if they were to start reducing on um, the uh, cost of the, uh, and the energy that they use uh, on a daily basis? Well, one of the major benefits is, is cost savings. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, as we speak, um, we've just, the CDF has just uh, finished hosting a, a forum mm -hmm. here in St. Lucia where we are trying to generate um, demand, effective demand uh, for uh, investments in the energy sector, in the sustainable energy sector. And, the, and we had quite a good turnout of small businesses because they saw the benefit um, of receiving the support from the CDF because they, they see it going straight to their bottom line um, through the cost savings that are generated by uh, increased efficiency of uh, energy use and also the deployment of renewable energy uh, technologies to substitute for the use of fossil fuels. Okay. Um, what types of business owners attended the forum? Do you 
Do you know IRP? Yes, yes, yes. We had a cross section of uh, small businesses in San Lucia. Mm -hmm. um, we had a particular drive to the agricultural sector. I'm, I'm pleased to, to, to know that uh, quite a few agricultural uh, agencies, um, cooperatives, as mm -hmm. well as individual uh, um, farmers and, and f entrepreneurs um, actually came to the forum. I spoke to them personally and they're very interested in introducing new technologies that would help them uh, save on energy costs. We had representatives from manufacturing, from retail and tourism. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a, a good cross-section of small businesses. Uh, Agriculture is a driving force in any um, island, any country, the world. And uh, to hear that they attended, and you're quite pleased that they attended the forum, um, what would you recommend for an individual that probably missed out on the forum but is watching the program now and hearing you, what do you recommend um, he or she will, should do to reduce the cost probably on their farm and what technologies should they look at to helping them reduce the cost on, um, of uh, the, the high cost of cost running their farm? Right. Well, we, we've had some experience uh, um, implementing some agriculture projects that mm -hmm. have renewable energy uh, elements in them. For example, they could be looking at solar pumps, for example. Then there are a lot of uh, um, innovative technologies in aquaponics. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just speaking to one of the uh, young entrepreneurs and he's saying that he's looking to scale up his operation by going vertical with um, you know, high-tech um, solar-driven uh, agriculture. So there, there are many opportunities that are available to the sector, especially with young people that uh, um, would see the benefit in getting into that type of agriculture rather than the, the sort of... More than traditional. Uh, yeah, more than the traditional mm -hmm. agriculture that we, that we associate with drudgery and hard work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, so there are a lot of opportunities. And, and what we've done is that um, recently we've hired a, a, a program specialist mm -hmm. focusing on sustainable energy who is reaching out to those potential clients and giving them the specific solutions to, 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 their, to, their, to their problems, to the challenges that they face. In fact, one of the, one of the um, outcomes of the forum mm -hmm. is that we were able to get a lot of the SMEs that attended, not just in agriculture, in tourism, manufacturing, yeah. and retail, to set up appointments for us to go to their establishments and do first level energy audits to help them to determine the best technical solution for them in terms of renewable energy or mm -hmm. energy efficiency. With the um, fund now, how can these individuals, these entrepreneurs especially, tap into the, um, the CDF? Where do they go? How do they get that information? Well, we've established a portal for the credit risk abatement facility, so mm -hmm. um, they could visit that portal. Those that did not attend, um, we, we, we have them on a mailing list. We will, get, we will get to them. Not everybody was invited could attend. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work through the, uh, through the associations and the cooperatives to reach to these individuals, provide the information to them. Um, and word gets around, I think. And, and we've only now started this process in St. Lucia. We intend to, to, to continue whatever leads we've been able to generate to close on them and also to do this through the rest of the region as well. Um, so... Uh, I don't have the information at my fingertips, maybe I should have, but uh, once you visit the CDF website or mm -hmm. Craft okay. website, www.craft.org, you should get the information that you need, but we will be actively reaching out to potential clients That's to give actually them the, the information. information at your fingertips right there. Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that, um, they, that they need. But, but, but it's interesting because mm -hmm. it's a good question because what we've done is we put all of that information on a portal. Okay. And it's not just for the small uh, medium enterprises, but also for the financial institutions that are going to be providing the concessional financing to those SMEs. So if they want to apply for uh, uh, support from the craft facility, the applications can actually be done online as well. This, this is a very important terminology, support, because we have individuals who when they see fund, they believe that place will just give them the money and they can do whatever with it. What are you expecting from the entrepreneurs of the various industries when they have seek the assistance from the CDF, they've gotten the support? What are you looking for? Well, I mean, there are a number of stages to this. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, it's, it'll be important for me to talk about the different forms of support that we provide. Yes. Uh, most importantly, um, at the forum today, and, and in terms of the model that we've developed, we provide the technical support to the SMEs free of charge. <laughs> So if you want to, an energy audit done and you're interested in becoming part of that system to, to get support from the craft facility as a whole, we provide free technical assistance. That could be for uh, energy audits, as I mentioned. It could be that you have a project and you want to develop it so that it is bankable. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we can help you with your, with the, your project design. We can help you with your, your choice of technology appropriate to the scale of your business. And all of that technical assistance is free of charge. Once you've done that and the project is deemed to be bankable, we have signed up a number of financial institutions in St. Lucia and we're in the process of expanding that, that pool. So, so far we have the St. Lucia Development Bank and the Bank of St. Lucia signed up as partners of the CRAF. So you would go to, to, to them and they would assess your project and determine whether you qualify for credit risk support. Um, that support is currently be, being provided in the form of a partial guarantee on a concessional loan. Mm -hmm. So that does two things. It, it incentivizes the, the, the financial institution to lend to you, and it also makes the cost of, of borrowing lower for the SMEs. So it's all part of incentivizing investment in, 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 in renewable energy and energy efficiency. So there are different forms of support, technical support, mm -hmm. financial support. Okay. Now, what are some of the projects uh, that you are involved in and around the region? And of course, particularly here in St. Lucia. Okay, well, there are a number of areas in which we do projects. Mm -hmm. um, we have a mandate in accordance with the treaty, uh, revised treaty of Chagramas and the CDF agreement to work in three broad areas. Uh, infrastructure development is one, enterprise competitiveness and business development is another, mm -hmm. and facilitation of regional investment. Um, in our consultation of, uh, with the countries that we serve, these areas have been broken down into a number of thematic uh, thrusts. So renewable energy and energy efficiency is one. Um, sector level infrastructure, infrastructure to in, um, improve the productive capacity in agriculture, in tourism. National infrastructure is another one. And I'll give you, hopefully can give you a few examples yeah, in, please. in a yeah. minute. And agriculture, importantly, is, mm -hmm. a, is another sector that we get a lot of uh, requests for support and tourism. Mm -hmm. In all of these areas, in most of these areas, we actually have programs in St. Lucia. We've, we've done a youth enterprise project in agriculture in St. Lucia mm -hmm. uh, under our full cycle. Under this current cycle, we are supporting St. Lucia with community tourism. With the community tourism, there's a line of financing that we have through the SLDB that provides loans to um, businesses interested in um, doing business in tourism that is related to supporting the community tourism thrust. So that's, so that's uh, access, dealing with access to finance uh, for SMEs. Uh, but it also, we also provide them with technical support to, to improve the quality of their product. And we provide the government mm -hmm. with infrastructure, uh, um, loan financing to improve the infrastructure in the communities to make them more attractive for, uh, for visitation by, right. by tourists. So that's, that's one, one set of projects that we've been doing. At the national level, mm -hmm. we actually, in our full cycle, provided a significant, significant level of financing to St. Vincent and the Grenadines for their new airport, mm -hmm. Argyle International Airport, including a renewable energy uh, solar farm, which was co-financed with the Global Environmental Facility. And now we are uh, supporting St. Vincent in um, building um, uh, hotels mm -hmm. that will be given to international uh, operators to manage. So all in all, we're talking programs in the region of about 8 to 10 million US dollars um, for, for these countries. Okay. We, we operate across the region, but these are just probably some examples that might um, give an idea of the, the breadth of, of, the, of the work that we do. That we, okay, well, we'll take a quick break right now. When we get back, we'll find out some more of uh, the work that is done. And also, I'm curious to find out a little bit about the climate change, because we always hear talk about climate change and uh, the CDF's involvement in the discussion. So we'll do that right after the break. Sure. This is TV30. I'm your host, Kennel Eugene. We'll be back after this. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures 
demands even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back to TV30. I am your host, Kenneth Eugene. With me today is our guest, Mr. Ronald S Rodinal Suma, and he is the Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean, the CARICOM Development Fund. I tried my best not to say Caribbean and it happened. I was <laughs> about to give the entire CARICOM a <laughs> feeling when it happened anyway. Uh, Mr. Suma, climate change is a big discussion now. We have, well, not now, it has been for a long time. Uh, but uh, I'm curious to find out um, CDF's involvement in that discussion around climate change um, within the region. Um, if you guys have any involvement at all, uh, what is the basis? Yes, we, we have um, quite a significant involvement, which probably is not, is not known by many. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because one of the thematic, two of the thematic areas in which we work, um, I've spoken about sustainable energy, mm -hmm. the other being infrastructure. Um, because infrastructure is, is, is adversely impacted by climate change, when you're building or building back, it has to be resilient, it has to be resilient to climate change. So a lot of our infrastructure projects have that element in them. I'll mm -hmm. just give you a few examples. Yeah. Um, for example, we, we, we co-finance the, um, the, the energy plant in Barbuda uh, with the UAE and the government of Antigua and Barbuda and the government of New Zealand mm -hmm. to set up a new plant which would be uh, this green, more green, with a combination of solar uh, battery but also with diesel backup. So we've done, we've, we've, we've been involved, and that was in response to building back more resiliently mm -hmm. after Hurricane Irma. Well, yeah. Right? And further to that, we are co-financing a project with the Caribbean Development Bank to, to underground the utilities infrastructure in Barbuda mm -hmm. to make the system even more resilient. Okay. So, so these are two examples of climate-related projects. We've done drainage and irrigation infrastructure projects mm -hmm. uh, in Guyana that have that are meant to to address the flooding issue which is climate related mm -hmm. and and there are elements of renewable energy in there where you have a a solo operated um, um, pumping system and a drainage system mm -hmm. so it's fully solar solar powered so we, we are addressing it in that way uh, as we move forward um, there are two there are two dimensions to climate action that we're involved in um, the energy side deals with mitigation. So I've spoken about the credit risk abatement facility. Correct. So what we're trying to do is to develop products or programs that address various aspects of our, our mandate. Mm -hmm. So the CRAF addresses the mitigation dimension of climate change, but we are currently in the process of developing a, a fund and, uh, that will address the, the resilience building, particularly for infrastructure. Okay. And, and including um, setting up a, a, a system that would attract more private sector investment in resilience building. Mm -hmm. So that resilience fund, we'll be able to speak more definitively about it, uh, hopefully later in the year. It's in the process of being structured now. Um, and once we, once we do that, then we become, we'll become uh, much more active in the, climate, uh, in the climate action sphere. And allied with that, we are currently in the final stages of a seeking um, accreditation to the Green Climate Fund. So we will have additional resources available to the CDF to help the region mm -hmm. with its climate agenda. Why is it important for um, the CDF to engage in um, um, funds such as the uh, green fund you just spoke about? Well, it's critical because the cost of, of uh, building back mm -hmm. in the aftermath of disasters is very high. Um, so there's been a call um, as you'd be aware, for much more concessional financing, mm -hmm. including grant financing, if, if, you know, to the extent possible, to help the countries uh, rebuild, because they already have such um, high debt levels. Yeah. So there's an there's an increased emphasis on, on being able to tap into those funds to bring more concessionality to the process of building back better. 
Um, I think that's one of the major reasons why we are involved, mm -hmm. um, because as a regional fund um, responsible for addressing situations of disadvantage in the countries, obviously one of the major challenges we face is the challenges that the challenges that 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 um, emanate from climate mm -hmm. climate change, both on the adaptation side uh, as well as uh, the, the mitigation side. So we we have to be involved. Uh, um, in order to, to, to support the region's development trust. Excellent. Um, now we have programs that um, you have spoken about just recently. And I'm curious now, the successes, everybody wants to know, okay, if I'm going to be a part of something, it has to be successful. What are some of the successes that you can speak of, speak about, and you can, of course, boast it to anyone who'd ask you a question, um, specifically about the programs that CDS engage in? Well, a lot of the projects that I have mentioned, um, I mean, can be considered to be successes. Successful, They've been right. successfully implemented. Mm -hmm. The, the um, Barbuda Energy Resilience Project that we are co-financing with the CDB is, is ongoing now. Mm -hmm. But the, full, the Green Barbuda plant is, is up and running. It should have been commissioned by now, but it sustained some slight damage from the recent uh, hurricane. So they're now sort of um, uh, dealing with that so that it can properly commission the plant. The Argyle International Airport in, mm -hmm. in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is up and running, it's a success. And we've also uh, successfully um, provided, uh, on lent, provided funds to the development banks to so on-lend to SMEs. Okay. Uh, we typically do those in tranches of three to five million US dollars. So we've worked with uh, Development Finance Corporation in Belize with these lines of credit, Senusha Development Bank, um, aid bank in in in, um, in Dominica, the Green mm -hmm. Development Bank. We're currently working with the um, Antiguan Barbuda government to resuscitate the Antiguan Barbuda Development Bank. So once once we uh, we strengthen the operations of these banks, they can lend more effectively and at concessional rates to to SMEs. So that that is a, a success story for us, and we're actually building on that, okay. using these development banks as partners for the CRAF so that they can um, uh, incrementally uh, lend more to SMEs interested in energy investments. Individual um, businesses, especially small businesses, would ask one question. What is in it for me? What would your answer be to them? Well, the, the, the answer would be benefits to uh, the, com the competitiveness of your, of your business, uh, uh, lowering your operating costs. Um, providing you for additional cash flow for expansion, um, uh, giving you an opportunity to, to expand uh, your reach into the regional interna international market mm -hmm. um, by allowing you to operate more competitively. And, and this morning when that question was asked, uh, I, I think they appreciated the answers we, mm -hmm. we gave them. And they appreciated the fact that we recognize that there's a need to incentivize investments in the sector which is why the technical assistance is, is, is being provided at no cost to them. And, and that there's, there's, there's support in the systems uh, that, we prov that we are making available to them, where, where, wherever their, their, their challenge might be, whether it's a technical challenge, whether it's an access to finance challenge, um, we have are, we are put uh, mechanisms in place to support them. So what's in it for them is uh, a program that is tailored to meet their specific needs, mm -hmm and to open up the opportunities uh, for them to, to lower their operating costs and expand their businesses. You would have some that would hear that, um, see their comrades or their colleagues engaging in it, being successful, but they would still be reluctant to take the plunge, take the dip. Um, why do you think that? What, what do you think the reason is for an um, uh, entrepreneur, for example, being reluctant to take advantage of um, all the benefits that you just spoke about? Well, I think, uh, when you speak to these business, business people, what they said, and some of them said it today, mm -hmm. that um, there's a lot of fatigue with these new facilities that have been presented to them. They, they see it as a lot of talk and, and little action. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we're obviously trying to be different. We're trying to, to ensure that whatever we offer, we can bring to a successful closure. Um, and, and what we would say to them is, look at the evidence, give it a try. And we are prepared to, to, hold, to do hand-holding with them and take them through the process. So in fact, one of the major objectives of the, of the, um, 
the forum that we had uh, today and we're going to do throughout the region mm -hmm. is to raise awareness of the opportunities and to let them know that the CDF and its partners are there to support them every step of the way. So whatever the, na whatever the nature of their challenges or the opportunity they're pursuing, um, we have the technical resources in-house to help them to define, uh, better define what they wanted to do, help them develop their projects and to make them bankable. That's the most important thing. The mm -hmm. banks have the financing but there's a shortage of good projects uh, to, to, to drive the investments. Mm -hmm. So we are offering the small businesses assistance in getting their projects to market. So, um, I mean, some of them would be reluctant because they've heard it before, mm -hmm. um, but we are able, uh, even at this stage, to, to show them the successes that we have been able to generate so far. There's one company that has benefited for the, from the full range of services of Kraft, mm -hmm. so we showcased that this morning. And we are hoping that with, uh, with the leads that we have generated from the interest expressed today, mm -hmm. that we will have a pipeline of projects going through the financial system in St. Lucia that okay. can then add to that demonstration effect and then encourage more businesses to come okay. forward. Now, you mentioned that um, the forum was held today in St. Lucia and it will be, there will be more forums coming up. Uh, can you let us know when and where they will be held? Well, what we have done, um, because the financial institutions are, are critical to the functioning of this facility, um, everything, everything dovetails into a financial institution being able to finance a bankable project. Mm -hmm. So what would dictate where we go next is where we have signed up financial institutions. Okay. So we have done that in Belize. So I think we're going to go to Belize next. We are in the process of finalizing this for Grenada and Antigua and Barbuda. So these are the two OECS countries we're likely to go to okay. afterwards. And as we sign up financial institutions uh, in these countries where, so there's, a, so there's some institution that the uh, SMEs can go to and get the full range of services, then we go and promote the facility in that country. What is your ultimate goal? Our ultimate goal, and, and I'm happy you asked that question because the reason that the CDF was set up was to um, foster greater economic and social cohesion in CARICOM. Mm -hmm. And we do that by working with those countries and, and sectors and businesses that need the, the most help to take advantage of the single market and economy. So that's what our, our goal is, really. Our, our main goal is to address any dislocation, economic mm -hmm. dislocation that might arise from the implementation of the CSME, but more positively, to promote social and economic cohesion in CARICOM. And uh, uh, to the extent that we can help businesses to become more competitive, improve their capacity to, to produce and trade and, and, and create employment, then we are providing opportunities for social and economic cohesion. Excellent. Mr. Suma, I want to say a big thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon with uh, TV30. And good luck with the forum as you guys move to Belize and you try to wrap up with the other uh, OECS countries. This has been TV30. My guest today was Rodin El Suma, the Chief Executive Officer of the CARICOM Development Fund. My name is Kenel Eugene. To have a great day. Bye-bye now.